This is how you know it's properly the end of summer with the arrival of the Paris Review Fall issue. So I'm going to actually open it on camera because I think this will be fun. I talked about how I subscribed to this like earlier in the summer. I haven't like made it all the way through the like, I think it's a summer 2023 issue. Oh, that's kind of hard. There's a self-aware part of me that is aware that um, obviously, you know, people are getting more and more into um, buying these literary magazines because they're good, you know, because we're like supporting um, print publication. But then there's another like cynical slash critical part of me that also feels like it's part of the, not just overconsumption, but it's like, it's like the tote bags and the hats and everything. It's like this, <laughs> the social media of reading, um, and all of these things are signaling. Like I posted this in my story, and obviously I am signaling that I'm a certain type of reader with a certain type of like readerly interest, plugged into like a certain type of culture, you know. And I don't know. I don't know if I'm bringing this up because of my weird like insecurities about what I'm doing even um, and just like the whole act of sharing and documenting these reading experiences like because it's social media there is still that aspect that um, almost requires us to like decide on what our roles are like I'm playing to it, branding, all of that stuff. Anyway, it's a very gorgeous issue. Um, under, um, I believe it's Emily Stokes that's the um, current, um, yes, the current editor-in-chief, but like her issues have been, like have these really gorgeous covers and um, these, they're beautiful objects, not just like, you know, the, the work that's within them. But yeah, it's fun. I'm enjoying making my way through the other one that I have. Um, and I was glad to see this one come in and I was like, yes, this is like, it's also taking off the pressure that I'm hoping will follow through this fall in terms of reading because my summer reading was a lot of pressure on top of a lot of the shit that I was going through. And I feel like stuff like this remind me that again, like this is for pleasure. I've talked about it before, but in my house of hearts, I don't treat this like I should, where I'm like, this is supposed to be fun. Um, but yeah, I'm. there's a way that I'm imagining these reading diaries um, that's a bit more low stakes and a lot of critical entries, but also like casual entries and also fun vlog stuff because I do love vlogging. But yeah, that was just a little, I guess you could say like unboxing. Also, I'm in love with this camera. I. I've seen a lot of people talk about it. Like cameras are my big vice. Like I will very quickly fall in love with a camera, do like a lot of research and then decide that I need it. Um, and I was kind of, this was a depression pur purchase, I won't lie. I was very down and then I felt like this would make me feel happy. And honestly, it really is. So I guess it did work, but um, yeah, all right. <laughs> Shout out to September. very sunny right now and it's also very windy so good luck to the sound <laughs> and I'm a bit self-conscious as I typically am filming outside I wanted to talk about um, the book that I'm currently reading The Golden Notebook by Doris Lesson I feel like I still don't know what this novel is about and that's partially like the fun of it to me because like I don't really know what to expect like we started off with a conversation it was just like two friends kind of catching up after a period of after like a year apart it's getting like a lot of my brain firing like synapses firing breaking my brain in the good way which is what i love when i read a novel like i've kind of missed this experience at the point where i am right like our protagonist and anna i believe not Anne, yeah anna who's a writer she wrote a novel um, a couple years ago but she hasn't successfully written anything else she has been writing she's been writing in these like four notebooks that she has but like nothing Ooh, sound is probably going to be really bad but um she hasn't really written anything that she feels like 
not even necessarily proud of she's sort of struggling with like a conundrum in terms of the sort of text that she would write so there's a part where she sort of writes this fake review of her first novel and it's basically her like making fun of like colonial era white savior novel she starts to like problematize like the function of the novel and i actually want to read this if this first of all the sound situation is so funny to me so she starts to write about you know the sort of novels in the old sense and i kind of also want to like push back against this idea of these kinds of novels too. She uses Thomas Mann as an example, so the last of the writers in the old sense who used the novel for philosophical statements about life. And then she writes that the point is that the function of the novel seems to be changing, um, it's become an outpost of journalism, so people are reading novels to find out about like, to enter into somebody else's life, or to enter into like another place setting situation that they're not familiar with. The sort of uh, conclusion that she's kind of coming to is that the sort of quality of a novel that makes it a novel is for it to have the quality of philosophy. Mind you, there's still like flaws in this. It's just making me think of like function of the novel. Um, it's making me think of a class that I took that I've actually talked about here before, Canons of Canonicity. Um, and that was a class that was really useful in terms of thinking of these questions and of course if you're talking about function as your way to like define what something is then we're also talking about form right so she keeps um, in terms of what she's trying to write and what she feels like she might end up writing she has these oppositions of like essentially fact versus fiction but thinking of it more so in terms of like story so like artifice something that is like molded right trying to get narrative out of something more complicated so trying to find a simple narrative for that versus like um truth you know how something actually was the emotional truth of something philosophical truth of something i don't know i kind of like this like intertextual um intratextual critique it makes me think too of if an egyptian cannot speak that third section and this part made me think of um playing in the dark by tony morrison but she writes that that novel was an immoral novel because that terrible lying nostalgia lights every sentence and I know that in order to write another, to write those 50 reports on society which I have the material to write, I would have to deliberately whip up in myself that same emotion and it would be that emotion which would make those 50 books novels and not reported. But yeah, I don't know. I like when I'm excited like this about reading and about a particular type of text. Novels that feel like novels, that feel like weighty and like they're asking questions that get my brain worked up in the best way. I want to show off the purchase that I made today. <laughs> it's a single purchase. Um, it's not book related, but it's fun. I went to that record store and honestly, it's kind of annoying because I did not like take note of the name of the store. <laughs> I just know where it is so I could find it again. But yeah, I bought this. <laughs> One of the co-owners like has sources in like different places and he basically makes these mixes from like um, vinyls and stuff. So this is one that's like Jamaican 
It's like reggae music basically and it's called, or he called it like Ride Along, Jamaican Blacks. I listened to like a bunch of these cassettes or um, these tapes and I decided I wanted to take this one because I love like sweet reggae that's like vibey and everything. The, the other thing that I bought is this one. <laughs> um, my first time having Vino Verde, I don't know how to pronounce it. Honestly, the reason I bought this was because of this essay by Sarah Nicole Perka, her Twin Peaks essay, but like the first one starts with, um, I'll never forget her talking about drinking Vino Verde and how it was like sweet and like drinkable wine, the way that like you can like drink, like sip on beer, like that kind of wine. And I've wanted to try it since and so. I drank most of this. Yeah. Alright, that's it. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Y